holy lord college students are organizing an on-campus day of resistance in support of hamas welcome back to the jp reacts channel my beautiful freedom loving friend where we like to call out the lies hypocrisy and corruption of tyrants shine the light of awareness on woke absurdities and highlight the amazing work of other freedom fighters now in Israel, you know about the attacks. And in my opinion, there is no question that Hamas is evil. You may have heard the reports of what they've done to innocent women and children, innocent men as well. It's just absolutely horrendous. There is no good that would do that. There's no good that would kill innocent babies. So it's obvious it's pure evil working through Hamas. Now, as I mentioned, there is an organization of college students rallying an on-campus day of resistance to support Hamas. I'm going to tell you something that you probably weren't thinking about that in a second, but first, let's hit the details of this. And here you can see a little shot of the flyer on the Daily Wire. Day of resistance, protest for Palestine. The largest network of campus anti-Israel groups is organizing a day of resistance on Thursday to rally support for the deadly Hamas terrorist attacks on Israel. Rallying for the terrorists who have killed many innocent people. Calling the murder of nearly 1,000 Israelis, including women and children, a historic win for the Palestinian resistance. And here's what that group has to say. Our people choose resistance over negotiated cages on our homeland. The call for complete liberation and return is an explicit call for the elimination of Israel. Jeez. Which is a shared goal of the Hamas terrorist groups. The SJP toolkit calls Hamas terror attacks a historic win and refers to the terrorists as martyrs. SJP is calling for protests by its chapters across the United States and Canada, which it refers to in the document as Occupied Turtle Island, a reference to what Native American tribes call North America. Okay. It is distributing talking points to defend Hamas for its terror attacks, as well as templates created on Canva to organize the events. Here's something interesting. Canva did not respond to a request for comment on the use of its program to mobilize support for terrorism. Its website states that the program cannot be used to discriminate others based on factors such as race, religion, ancestry, or national origin, and cannot be used to incite or promote hostility or violence. That's interesting. I mean, how many bank accounts were frozen? How many people have been kicked off of GoFundMe for being a little bit too freedom minded but here's this organization like hey we're gonna we're here rallying support for terrorists and that does beg the question is that promoting violence which is absolutely not protected under the first amendment but nonetheless the organization canva they're they're like yeah, yeah that's good that's good Kick off Trump supporters, screw them, they're dangerous. They're the real domestic terrorists, but these actual terrorists, I don't know. We'll, we'll platform them. College campuses have emerged as a hotbed for anti-Israel sentiment, and it appears to be largely driven by this organization, Students for Justice in Palestine. A shocking statement from students at the University of Virginia referring to the terrorist slaughter as an unprecedented feat for the 21st century. Whoa. For example, was put out by the school's SJP chapter. SJP has also been the force behind pro-Hamas statements from students at Swarthmore College, Harvard University, hey, Ivy League, George Washington University. And before I share an opinion that might surprise you, two more little pieces. SJP says the goal is to contextualize, frame, and above all, normalize and support our fearless resistance. In other words, expose people to their propaganda, their narrative. The group claims, keep in mind, this is the group organizing protests and gatherings on college campuses. Very impressionable minds. The group claims that nobody in Israel should be considered a civilian because settlers are not civilians. All Israelis, according to the SJP, are military assets used to ensure continued control over stolen Palestinian land. And when people are occupied, resistance is justified. Resistance as in terrorist attacks. 
killing innocent children, babies. Now, at first glance, you might say, holy Lord, college campuses organizing protests supporting Hamas? That should never be able to happen. That is atrocious. We need to stop it. Here's my thought on that, and it might be different than what you were thinking, or maybe you're already on the same page with me. There's a principle of free speech, and to be principled with free speech, we have to allow all speech, not just speech we agree with. And this would certainly, you know, supporting Hamas, I would imagine this is terrible. It is supporting evil, and they too need to be able to speak. Why? Because if everybody can't speak, then you have no free speech. And this is just, you know, we've seen obviously 99.999% of the time, speech that's shut down or attempted to be shut down or censored or people coming to do lectures on a campus, it's pro-freedom conservative voices that are being censored. And here, for some reason, there's people on the left who are all about like, dude, yeah, Hamas, that's great, you know, go Palestine. LGBTQ for Palestine. And they don't actually realize there's no gay rights in Palestine. You're considered a criminal in Palestine, but Israel, you do have rights, but you're supporting Palestine. Good luck making sense of that. So in no way do I think this protest that's supporting something I, I totally disagree with, in no way do I think this protest should be shut down. Why? Because I think it's important to be principled with free speech and not be tempted to do what the leftists have been doing for years now, where we want to shut down speech that we don't agree with, shut down speech that we know is supporting and propagating evil. We have to allow that. We don't have to support it. We don't have to encourage it. We don't have to listen to it. And we can actually speak out against that speech by warning people about it and calling them out, but we have to allow it. I think this is an excellent example of an opportunity to really root in even deeper to the principle of free speech. This is something, I mean, it, it just, you would have to barf looking at this happening. But as true freedom-loving people, we have to acknowledge it needs to happen. People have words they want to say about it, even if they're complete lies supporting Hamas. We have to allow it. That is so important in order to protect our free speech. And exercising our free speech, we can certainly call out the hypocrisy of college campuses that have shut down a number of conservative speakers, canceled events, even Dave Chappelle having comedy shows canceled because people rise up like, we don't want him to be able to say words. And I know a number of Daily Wire personalities, they routinely do speeches on college campuses and sometimes they're shut down. Jordan Peterson, they've tried to shut him down a number of times. So we can certainly use our free speech to call out the hypocrisy of college campuses for not allowing pro-freedom, pro-America words to be spoken, but allowing supportive words to terrorists, murdering terrorists to be spoken. And we can call out their hypocrisy, not in an effort to compel them to shut down this speech we don't like, but to support the speech that we have a right to make. The other reason why I'm glad this is happening, not that I'm glad that like, support is happening for Hamas, but why I'm glad it's allowed is it allows us to know who these people are. With free speech, the beauty of it is, if someone's evil, allow them to talk. So you can find out who's evil. So you can find out who has the bad ideas. So you can find out who has the, the dangerous, degenerating human ideas. We don't know who they are if they're not talking. So it's a good idea to allow free speech because it lets us see who the evil ones are. and also lets us identify who we deem to be the good guys who are supporting humanity, who have good ideas. It lets us understand who has the bad ideas. Hi, Hillary Clinton. You want to deprogram Trump supporters? Thank you for saying that. We see you. And then we get to see people who have the good ideas, people who we want to pay attention to and learn from. So this is absolutely heinous that it's even happening, but it's important that it's allowed to happen as atrocious as it is. College campuses hosting support for you know resistance supporting Hamas makes me want to throw up and free speech on the principle of it 
that too has to be tolerated. With that said, my beautiful freedom loving friend, thank you for paying attention to this video. Thank you for caring about the most important right we have, which is the right to free speech. It's the most fundamental of all rights. In the words of Dave Chappelle, you may have heard me quote him before on this, the First Amendment is first for a reason. And the Second Amendment is just in case the first one doesn't work out. Look forward to seeing you on our next video. But before that, I want to tell you about something important. Do you want to survive the apocalypse? If so, you need the wellness company's emergency medical kit. Awake doctors like Dr. Peter McCullough started the wellness company to create real change in healthcare. And part of that change is making sure that you get to take control of your health. They offer a wide variety of services like telehealth and specially formulated natural supplements to help with lingering effects of the you know what and most recently they launched the emergency medical kit which contains eight potentially life-saving medications for you to keep on hand in times of need whether it be natural disasters supply chain shortages medical emergencies or the apocalypse you can rest assured knowing that you have emergency antibiotics antivirals and antiparasitics on hand to help keep you and your family safe and if you're thinking well I'm not a doctor. How would I know what to take and when? Well, luckily the kit contains an emergency medication guidebook detailing how and when to take which medications. The well-being of my health and my family's health is my number one priority, and having the emergency medical kit on hand gives me tremendous peace of mind. So if you want to be prepared for the unexpected, go to twc.health slash jpreacts to order yours today. And while you're there, be sure to use a discount code JPREACTS for 15% off. Also, please note, the emergency medical kit is available only in the USA. That is twc.health slash JPREACTS. Enjoy.